Now I would like to invite Dr. Ramya and uh, she will be uh, presenting a video on a rare case of a spontaneous resolution of an indirect carotico-cavernous fistula. Timely intervention, preserve the vision and salvage the eye. At the outset, I would like to thank ASOS for giving me this opportunity and selecting my video for this uh, prestigious Tony Fernandez video awards. Uh, audio, please. Spontaneous resolution of an indirect carotico-cavernous fistula. Timely intervention restored the vision and salvaged the eye. A 51-year-old diabetic patient came to us with complaints of persistent redness in his left eye, which was treated as conjunctivitis for the past one month. He also complained of intermittent double vision on his left gaze. A 54-year-old male, male complain, a diabetic patient came to us with first part, first part from the first. Spontaneous resolution of an indirect carotico-cavernous fistula. Timely intervention restored the vision and salvaged the eye. A 51-year-old diabetic patient came to us with complaints of persistent redness in his left eye, which was treated as conjunctivitis for the past one month. He also complained of intermittent double vision on his left gaze. Why? It's not playing. There were uh, corpto-shaped vessels in his uh, left eye. And on cover test, there was a left intermittent uh, uh, is isotropia, uh, suggestive of left lateral rectus paresis. So, uh, and he had a mild axial proptosis and a subtle abduction deficit in the left eye. Suspecting a carotico-cavernous fistula, I have advised the patient for MRI with MRA. And uh, uh, that was suggestive of an increased uh, uh, SOV enlargement. And then they go ahead with the suspecting CCF, they go ahead with the uh, digital subtraction angiography, which showed a, a communication between the right internal carotid artery and the left cavernous sinus, suggestive of a Barrow's type B in, uh, in, indirect carotico cavernous fistula. This is the fistula showed in the right carotico cavernous. This is the AP, and the other one is the lateral view showing the CCF. So the patient has been advised to endovascular coagulation from the uh, department, and uh, but the patient deferred. So, and the patient was prophylactically started on anti glaucoma medications. The, when he presented, the vision was 6 9 uh, at the first visit. But after a few uh, uh, weeks, he presented like this. So, when I asked the history, he said uh, uh, he went to many other places, and at last, but, uh, he ended up in the neuro radiology department. And they they done the uh, uh, transorbital Doppler, which showed complete thrombosis of the superior ophthalmic vein. Since there was no uh, uh, carotico cavernous reflex, 
So they told it, uh, the uh, fistula was closed spontaneously, but because of the acute thrombosis, the patient has presented with a sudden acute, uh, acute proptosis of the eye with frozen eye, you know, extraocular movements. And the only the central one third of the cornea was uh, seen and there was exposure keratopathy. On examination, he had a mild elevation of the disc and uh, suggesting an impending uh, optic nerve dysfunction or a, 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 a central retinal vein occlusion. So in this case, we have to salvage the eye. That is the most important in this step, otherwise the patient will lose the vision. So we went ahead with the lateral cantholysis and, and canthotomy to uh, reduce the intraorbital compartment, uh, reduce the intraorbital compartment syndrome and to save the eye. So, and uh, since there was thrombosis of the superior ophthalmic vein, we have to uh, prevent the carotico-cavernous thrombosis also. So, the patient has been previously started on subcutaneous heparin 6000 international unit 6 hourly. We had topped it for two days and went ahead with the uh, lateral canthotomy with the cantholysis. And it, there was severe resistance to the uh, retropulsion on table. Uh, uh, the infiltrative anesthesia was given to the lid and the artery forces was placed at the lateral orbital margin and the cut is given from the lateral canthus to the lateral orbital rim. It's a simple procedure actually and life uh, vision saving as well as eye saving. So the lateral canthal tendon, it is uh, cut, the inferior crest of the lateral canthal tendon is cut and the intraorbital pressure is reduced. But even after this, the patient had severe resistance to retropulsion. So to, pre to uh, then uh, to protect the cornea, we did a lateral tarso. is cut into the anterior and posterior lamellae, then Through the bolster, the four millimeter above the lid margin, then through the gray line, then the same is taken through the gray line, four millimeter below the uh, lower lid margin, and the, through the bolster and tied it. And after two weeks, and at that point the vision was 660, and there was some lid, uh, disc elevation also. So postoperative, after six, uh, one week, the uh, uh, the uh, proptosis has reduced and also the uh, chemosis and the extraocular movements also somewhat uh, recovered. And the cornea is now visible. Uh, uh, previously it was only one third portion was visible. It is fully covered and there was uh, thick and keratinized uh, conjunctiva. So after two weeks almost uh, the eye looks uh, uh, quiet only with a mild chemosis and extraocular movements was almost fully recovered. case photographs you can see fully recovered. So in this case, a combined treatment of lateral cantholysis, tarsorapy, a subcutaneous anticoagulation using heparin and anti-glaucoma medication saved the patient's eye as well as vision. And he uh, he's restored his vision back to 6-9. Thank you. Excellent video. So what was the duration of this much of chemosis? Was it uh, before Okay. In the such case, we could able to make out an actual proptosis. But he suddenly presented within one week with a sudden acute proptosis. That time, he was in an, as another place in the neuroradiology department. Then there, they did the transorbital Doppler. Previously, there was only partial thrombosis of the superior ophthalmic vein. But when they did the tra transorbital Doppler, there was complete there was complete uh, thrombosis of the superior ophthalmic vein, and there was no reflex from the uh, uh, carotid to the cavernous sinus. So there was a functional closure of the uh, carotico cavernous fistula. At that point, they suggested not to intervene uh, from that, their point of view, but here the, uh, uh, the, the now it should be, uh, the eye should be salvaged. So that's why they, he, they have referred to us.
the salvaged eye. It was an acute presentation of thrombosis within one week. Okay, so they didn't uh, went for the coiling no, intervention? No. Or Actually, the patient they did, <laughs> means he was uh, uh, slightly reluctant to do any procedure. Okay. So when he presented first, they have advised the coiling, but when he presented to one department with a full, uh, full uh, eye problem, his uh, uh, CCF was spontaneously closed. Okay. So which anesthesia under uh, this procedure was done? Infiltrative anesthesia to the lateral side. Okay. Then uh, after the, once the intraorbital pressure is reduced, I gave slight periorbital also to uh, uh, inferior uh, crust, that's it, that's all. Okay. Uh, lid margin, mainly infiltrative anesthesia, nothing else. And supportive treatment other than heparin? Uh, other than heparin, anti-glaucoma medications mainly. Which, which medication and why? Here, uh, this is mainly because of the episcleaner venous pressure is increased. It's a secondary glaucoma. So, ideally, when the uh, cavernous pestilla is closed, the eye pressure reduces to normal. But uh, we can give it like anti glaucoma medications to reduce the aqueous pressure. Also, this, some drugs like uh, prostaglandins also has helped in this uh, reducing the episcleral venous pressure. Though there is not much evidence. And now, pre in, uh, recently, the natasodil has come uh, that uh, they say it will reduce the episcleral venous pressure. Okay, thank you. Thank you so nice much. Nice presentation. Any visual fields you had done post-operatively? Uh, any visual fields you did post-operatively? Patient regained 6-9 vision. Uh, post-op, post-op. Now, quick, uh, I'll just give you a quick heads up. Very nice case, very well uh, documented also. But one is when you're presenting in front of, you know, a, a judging section, everything has to be absolutely fine. So, you know, the voiceover missing was not quite clear. And uh, the other thing is, you know, the post-op results of everything, if it is well documented, then it closes the case basically. Otherwise, there are so many questions on it. Thank you.